I first got involved with Art Bling, <clears throat> right at the beginning of it, probably about 15 years ago when it first started, and was asked um, by the original sort of organizer um, who was working with the head of the, um, the cancer center, who had seen a similar event and wanted to bring something like that to Birmingham where <clears throat> rather than a, a static sort of auction, there would be, um, you know, an event where um, the patrons could come around and interact with the artists and see how things were being made as opposed to seeing a finished product. And I thought, well, that sounds fun. You know, it's, it's a little nerve wracking to think about being the performer in front of um, you know, a crowd, because you normally take a much more a longer length of time than just 90 minutes to produce a final product. But, you know, it's a fun event. You get to meet the patrons. They see what you're doing. You have a lot of interaction. And um, so all in all, it's just a good event. And I, you know, support the cause of cancer awareness and the Cancer Center. So it's worked out really well for me. My art has evolved over the last 10 or 15 years. Um, I used to do, and I still do on occasion, but I used to do much smaller, more detailed pieces. Um, interiors, very finely detailed um, landscapes, insects, fishing lures, and a lot of gold leaf and copper, and a lot of, of icons that I did. Um, but I now am a little limited in uh, physically. Um, so, I've, and I've always been interested in abstract art, but I've never really understood it. So. Uh, through that process, both of being a little more limited and in, in, in having one arm to paint with now instead of two, <clears throat> um, and learning what makes a good abstract as opposed to just, you know, not woodenly painting a scene or something, because that's very difficult too, and there's great skill involved in it for different artists, and it appeals to a lot of different people. But for me, it's, it's harder to do a good <clears throat> abstract painting than it is to do something that's realistic and figurative. Um, so there's a challenge to understanding, you know, the composition, the balance. Um, and I think <clears throat> sharing my studio with a photographer, I've learned some, from, you know, from that uh, also balance and, and um, you know, grids and so forth. <clears throat> so it's just been an evolution. What I'm going to do today is going to be, um, there may be some suggestions of some sort of figurative things in it, but it's really going to be totally abstract. And, and while there'll be some color in it, it'll be largely covered up by a lot of overpainting. There tends to be a lot of under and overpainting in what I do. So you may not see the layers directly, but if you look closely, you can see the different colors, the different textures that kind of bleed through. And, um, and I think that kind of is, is, is a nice piece and a nice kind of uh, symbolic um, uh, uh, type of reference, particularly when we were doing something this for a charitable event because people's stories are not necessarily, you know, apparent on the surface. They've got something that's beneath that as well. And so I think that painting that has something that's not just what you see on the surface, but what's behind it and under it speaks to that creation also.